Hey there. You ever get that feeling like you're just kind of, I don't know, skimming the surface of something? Like, it seems straightforward, but underneath, it's crazy powerful. Oh, totally. Like, you think you know it, but then... Exactly. That's how I feel about the GNU core utilities. So today, we're going deep. Like, really deep. We're yeah. talking L's, C, P, T, M, V, R, M. Those commands you use all the time. And we're going to uncover just how much power is hiding underneath. We're talking about the fundamental building blocks here. Yeah. We're using the GNU website as our guide, going right to the source, you know. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait a second, those are just the basics. What's there to actually learn? But that's the thing. It's like thinking a hammer's just for hitting things. Okay, good analogy. So explain that. Break it down. They're the foundation of every Linux or Unix system. Literally countless operations from managing files and directories to creating, copying, moving, deleting data, all of it. They're the backbone of scripting and automation. Okay, so you're saying there's a lot more to it than just, oh, I can move a file with this. Way more. So what makes them so powerful then? Is it just because they're simple? Yeah. Or is it? Simplicity is part of it, for sure, but it's more than that. It's the flexibility, the yeah. portability. The Janu core utilities, they were designed to be lightweight, efficient. They work across systems. Ah, uh -huh, so it's not just what they do. It's how they're built. Exactly, and they're open source. Right, right. So you can see how they work, modify them if you need to, and anyone can contribute to their development. They've got this whole passionate community behind them. Okay, so there's this whole community making sure they stay relevant. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. So it sounds like beyond those simple commands, there's this whole world of like, customization and control oh for sure like our mm error that's not just deleting a file you can wipe out entire directories oh you can definitely mess things up if you're not careful yeah no kidding you gotta know what those auctions and flags are doing it's like the difference between you know driving a car with just the steering wheel and pedals and knowing what every single button and switch does exactly okay let's dig into a specific example here let's talk else what's so interesting about listing files it seems pretty straightforward on the surface, right? Ah, but that's where things get interesting. It's all about the versatility. You can use L's to display the contents of a directory, obviously, but you can also sort files by name, by date, Okay. show file permissions, even see those hidden files. Hidden files? Yeah, the ones that don't normally show up. Oh, sneaky. So it's like yeah. L's is a detective tool. For your file system. Exactly. That's cool. Yeah, and there's so much more to discover about it. So it's not just about seeing a list of files, but really getting all that extra information about them. Right. Like a file's history, who has access. Which I imagine could be super helpful for troubleshooting or just understanding what's happening on your system. Exactly. It's like having x-ray vision for your computer. So L's, not so simple after all. It's like suddenly I'm seeing file permissions, hidden files, all this stuff I never even thought about before. Oh, right. And we're just getting started. Imagine you're trying to find a configuration file. You just changed it, but when was that again? Oh, I've been there. Scrolling through, trying to remember. Exactly. But with Velslart, boom! Files listed by modification time. Most recent first. No way. That's amazing. It's yeah. like a superpower for your file system. It is. But just like any superpower. It can be dangerous. Oh, yeah. Remember REM-R? The one that can delete entire directories. Yep. One wrong move and poof. Yikes. Talk about delete with extreme prejudice. Right. But here's the thing. Nuance. The yeah. iFlag with RM-R, interactive deletion, it asks you before it deletes each file. Okay. So it's like a safety switch on a power tool. You don't always need it, but yeah. you're really glad it's there when you do. Exactly. And speaking of powerful tools, the core utilities, they're the backbone of scripting and automation, too. Let's say you want to find all the PDF files in a directory, and not just that directory, but all the subdirectories, too. You could, you know, click through each one. Or I could just magically pull them all up. Is that what you're saying? You could write a script yeah. using these basic commands. Hold on. Yeah. I could whip up a script using these commands. Yeah. Like, to automate that whole thing. Absolutely. Let's say you want to find those PDF files. You start with documents, but you want to look everywhere inside it. You could use a command like find documents, dh type f dash name, dh PDF. Okay, you're going to have to break that down for me. Sure. So that combines the find command, we'll get into that more another time, with options to specify the starting directory. Documents, in this case, search for files, that's the diet type F part, and then match files ending with .pdf using the wildcard. 
It's a simple example, but it shows you how these commands can work together for more complex tasks. Okay, now things are getting really interesting. I never thought about combining these commands like that. And because they're so fundamental, they're incredibly well tested, super reliable. That's a good point. It's not like some new software that might be buggy or like have security holes. Exactly. These have been around for decades, used by millions of people every day. And if you do run into an issue, that open source thing we talked about, means anyone can look at the code, help debug it, improve it. It's constantly evolving. So we've talked about L's, R, M. What about C, P, and M, V? Those seem a bit more straightforward. They seem it, but trust me, there's more to them than meets the eye CP, for example, you think copy a file, right? But you can create backups with timestamps. Right, backups with timestamps. Yeah, preserve file permissions, even copy entire directory structures, but exclude specific files or folders. It's very granular. Okay, that timestamp thing sounds incredibly useful. So instead of just like copying it over and over, you've got a whole timeline. That's got to be better than just adding version 2 to the file name. Right, much better. And MV, not just for moving files either. You can rename files and directories right there on the command line. No more right-click, rename. Well, it's like these commands, they're the Swiss Army knives of Linux, huh? <sighs> Compact, versatile, always ready for action. That's a perfect analogy. And think of it this way. The more you know how to use your Swiss Army knife, the more resourceful you are, right? You can tackle all kinds of problems. Mastering the core utilities, it's the same idea. It gives you that deeper understanding, more control over your computer. This whole thing has been eye-opening. I thought I knew the basics, but I was barely scratching the surface. You and everyone else. So where do you suggest someone start if they really want to dive in and learn this stuff? We've got to have some listeners who are like, all right, I'm ready. Let's go. The GNU website is a goldmine. Their documentation is, well, it's expensive, but it's really good. Start with the basics. LS, CD, MKU, ARM. CP, MV, RM, you know, the classics. Get comfortable with those and then branch out. Each command has tons of documentation. Play around with the different options, the flags, experiment. So basically, go explore. See what these things can do. Exactly. It's like having a detailed manual for a really powerful set of tools. And the best part, it's all free. I like free. So to recap, the core utilities, they're fundamental to Linux and Unix. They're powerful. But yeah, you can cause some damage if you're not careful. And surprisingly customizable. So for someone listening who's like, all right, I want to go from just clicking icons to really using the command line, what's the one thing they should take away from all of this? Embrace the command line. It might seem intimidating, like some relic of the past or something, but honestly, it gives you a level of control and efficiency that's hard to beat. It's like the difference between like driving an automatic and a stick shift. Right? Yeah. Automatic's easy, but stick shift, you feel more connected. Exactly. Start small. Incorporate one or two commands into your day-to-day -day work. You'll be surprised how quickly it becomes second nature. And how much you can actually do. Mm. Well, this has been amazing. Really makes you appreciate the power hidden within these commands. They seem so simple at first glance. Deception. It's all about what's under the hood. So the next time you're at your computer... Don't just reach for the mouse, right? Open up that command line. Unlock the true potential of your system with the GNU Core Utilities.